Another way of working with words on the internet is simply to search for all the texts that have a particular word. For example, if we work with the word vulnerable even farther, then we will see what we find if we simply type in the browser and see what appears. For many words, the first finding from a search will be a dictionary definition, and so the student literally has a dictionary at hand whenever he or she is sitting in front of the computer. Another interesting way to work with words on the internet is to search for images. Again, we typed in vulnerable and take a look at the images that we find. There are some really interesting ones that come up for this. Some are abstract work. Here is what we get if we type the word secure. And this works very nicely, of course, with concrete nouns where the images clearly make sense. And particularly for non-concrete nouns that are more difficult or beginning level learners who have a hard time working with English definitions. If we type the word Dalmatian, we get results that are very clear as to what Dalmatian means. There's the results for Dalmatian really no ambiguity about the meaning of the word when you find images like that for students at any level. Another example for the technology that is used for vocabulary learning is the corpus. As I mentioned earlier, the corpus of contemporary American English provides a great resource for teachers and students to use to look at how words are actually used in text. We are going to call on our expert on COCA and our corpus man, Joe Geluso, to describe a little bit more about the corpus of contemporary American English. Here is the webpage for COCA, or the Corpus of Contemporary American English, the corpus that we talked about earlier. I just wanted to give you a quick look at the front page of the corpus so you have an idea um, of what we're talking about with a web-based corpus. So here we can see we have many different features such as list, chart, collocates, compare, and quick. These are all features we'll get into later. Um, but for now, I just want to do a one quick search so you have an idea of what COCA looks like. So let's say I want to look at the word vocabulary. I'll just type in vocabulary. I have list selected, so this will just give me a list of the word vocabulary in context. And here's the word vocabulary. After we search it, I click on that. And now I will see a number of what are called concordance lines um, that feature that target word that we just searched, in this case, vocabulary. So here we can see things like vocabulary development, um, reading experience aids vocabulary development, and just how the word vocabulary is used in context. And we have hundreds and hundreds of examples of how it's used because COCA is a really big corpus of about 500 million words. Another example of vocabulary tools that are available to everyone is spell checking. Most word processing programs and many other programs on the internet, when they have an editor, they also have spell checking in the background. These spell checking options allow students to see words that they have misspelled, and if we bring attention to those words, they can learn to use that feedback to improve their spelling, thereby learning an aspect of vocabulary. In this example, we see how certain words were misspelled and students who attended to the markup on those words could then do the corrections to get the markup to disappear. When the words are spelled correctly, they're no longer underlined in red. This lecture should provide a good basis for you as you work on the other activities in this unit on teaching vocabulary.